Hello and welcome back to The Shed. In today's episode I'm going to start a new series going over the four basic woodworking joints. That being the dovetail, the mortise and tenon, the dado and the half lap. In today's episode we're going to cover the dovetail. Hope you enjoy. So today we're talking about the dovetail. Now there are two main types of dovetails. There's the three dovetail which you can see on this drawer here that's from my tool cabinet behind me and it comes right the way through so you can see the end of the tails right through the piece of the board here. The second type is the blind dovetail as you can see on this test piece I've got here which was happens to be the very first blind dovetail I actually did but as you can see here the tails come through and they don't come through this top board so you can't see the top of them through the back here. Now when will we use a blind dovetail? A blind dovetail will be used on a drawer when you've got a drawer front and you don't want the tails coming through the front. Whereas the through dovetail can be used on drawers like I have here where you don't mind it coming through the front or you just want to show your dovetails off. It's more for bits of furniture around your workshop or, or bits you don't really care whether the dovetails are seen and they're there to perform a function. Today we're going to be focusing just straight on the through dovetail and in today's video we're going to be just doing a single dovetail because it's going to be the easiest to learn and I believe it's the best way for everyone to learn to do a dovetail is just to do a single dovetail before we work out marking out and doing more than one dovetail. We're going to be using these two bits of Maranti that I've got here and first of all we need to prepare these boards ready to do our marking and our layout of our dovetail. So what I've got here is my shooting board. I made that in one of my previous videos. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll try to leave a card to it up here. If not, you can find the link to it in the description below. So the purpose of this is to make sure the ends of each of these boards is dead square across and dead square across this way. So in both directions, it's dead square ready for our, our marking of our joinery. So this is a really easy thing to use. It's a really simple build as well. And it's going to make it so much easier for you doing your layout if your boards are already square and true and ready to go. I've squared the edges of these uh, two bits of board here up, ready for marking out our dovetails. Now when it comes to dovetails, there are a lot of different jigs out there for marking the dovetails. I happen to have a couple of these little squares here uh, by Joseph Marples. Uh, one of them is a one and six, which I use for soft wood or softer woods because it gives a wider tail. And one and eight that I tend to use on harder woods because it's a slightly narrow tail and the, because the woods are less soft, they're less likely to shrink in or, or be soft enough to push and pull through. The other things I use when I'm marking dovetails is a nice sharp knife and a pencil. Uh, a square and sometimes we're marking out a ruler or a pair of dividers. Now in this case we don't need to use a pair of dividers because we're just doing a single dovetail. I'll do another video in the future that shows the marking out and marking the, the dovetails using dividers but in this case don't worry about it. So when it comes to dovetails we have two parts. We have our tailboard that's where you can see the dovetails which on this drawer here are these ones here. And we have this second board, which is called the pin board. So we've got our pin here. This is a full pin. And we have our half pins here on either end. And they're the terms I'm going to be using while I'm doing this. So all we really need to do is take the first board. Know the thickness of the board we're going to be putting the through dovetail into. So in this case, we're going to be using this other board here. Use your fingertips like this. Feel until you feel that it's square. And we strike a line straight here. Now that's got our thickness on this board. We need to run that line that we put on both the boards around the entire board. For that, I've got a little square. You can use any square as long as it's actually a square square. So always keep the square off the face that's your reference face, face inside. It means you're going to get a nice, um, even and accurate line right the way around the board. 
So you run the line there. And then we come back onto this side to run that last one across there. And as you can see here now, we have a line right the way around the board. So we do the same on the other piece and then we'll get into marking out our dovetail. So now we have that line all the way around and I'm not sure if you can see it, it's just here. I'm not sure how well it's getting picked up on the camera, but it is here. So what we need to do, and I prefer when doing this, is you can make the choice of whether you start with the pins or whether you start with the tail. Now, I like to cut the tail because I find the tail is very easy to transfer onto the end of the next board. And that's why I like to do it that way. So we're going to do this. So what we need to do is to cut the tail out, we have to remove this pin material that will be marked across onto the other board. So we have to decide how big our pins are going to be. Now, for the most part, it's an aesthetic look. And as you can see here, nearly all of these outside half pins, they're called on the outsides, they're half pins because it's only half of a pin. As you can see, the full pin here, if you cut that down the middle, each one of these would make it up. Um, so we have to decide how big we want our half pins. And usually it doesn't really matter what size they are. You can go really fine with them. You can go really large with them. It's really aesthetic and doesn't really affect the way the joint works. However, I don't like to make it too thin on the outside edge because I like it to have a little bit of meat because I find that that is the, the weakest point of the dovetail is that those outside half pins, especially in the case of what we're doing here with a single tail. So what I'm gonna go with, and it's what I go with all of them, is I go with five mil. And I find that that uh, gives it enough strength and I don't have any weakness with the braking and I've, I've never had a problem with doing that. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark those five mil because when we're marking our tail on the angle here we have to get our square across lines first so what we do is we run the half pin lines square across the top of the board on the end of the board and then from that i get my dovetail jig and we run it down now if you're using a dovetail jig instead of a dovetail square like i have here that will have your square across line as well. So pretty much you just mark a line, run it in, and you can mark, mark it straight in there off that, which is good to have. I've never actually ended up having one, so I just use this and it works for me. But if you do have the jig, go ahead and use that. It's gonna make it quicker and easier. Now it's not an exact science. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but you wanna get it as accurate as you can. Normally I'd just stand this up in the vise to do this, but for ease of showing you guys, it's easiest to do it this way. And then I just bring our square up, obviously off our reference face again, which is the face, any face that you know is squared. And now we can go ahead and use the jig to mark our dovetails. Now, when it comes to this, with this particular square that I'm using for it, I'll just hold it like this and mark it. But if you're using the dovetail jig, you'd probably have it standing up on the vise and just mark it. Now, usually you would only mark the dovetails on your side of the board. So you can see what you're doing because it's really superfluous as what happens on the other side. I even know some makers, didn't actually draw the dovetail marks on there and they would just let the saw cut because the angle of your dovetail doesn't really matter so much because once you've marked that dovetail, you then transfer that onto the top of the other board. So whatever angle it ends up being is identical. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use my knife to mark this. 
I like to have a nice solid cut in line so you do a couple of light passes and then some heavier passes. Now on this wood you can't see it so I'm going to mark it in with pencil which is still quite difficult to see on this wood. mark it on the other side. I'm not going to be cutting to this side so I'm just going to quickly pencil that in. So now if we look here we've got a tail marked in here and here's our half pin and our half pin. A little easier to see here. We've got it marked here, half pin, half pin. So now what I'm going to do is see this baseline. I'm now going to run round and use my knife on the baseline of just these half pins, so I don't leave an ugly line on the back of the dail. So again, I'm going to use my square for that. This is just going to make sure it's a nice clear baseline when we come to actually uh, cut everything with the saw. You just hold it here, push the square up, do your mark. So now we have the dovetails marked on here. We need to now cut this tail out. Now, the first thing I like to do is come up and cut to remove the half, half pin waste before doing the straight cut on the side here to then remove the waste completely. So when it comes to this, because we are cutting for the tail here, we need to make sure that we stay on the waist side of the line. And in this case, the waist side is the half pin. So the idea is that we can take the line, but leave part of it there. So we're as accurate as we can be on our marking out and have the tail as large as we wanted it to be. For the purpose of cutting these, I'm gonna be using a gent saw. Um, it's got quite fine teeth and is very good for something like this. You could also, if you had dovetail saws in configurations like this, you could go ahead and do this, but this is a tenon saw and the tooth is a little too aggressive on this for my liking, so I'm not gonna be using that for this purpose. So my technique for doing this is that we, so the line is just here. It's a bit difficult to see, but you can see the line just here. And I like to start on the spot away from me and I start right on that line. You can leave the line if you want and then pair back to it with a chisel if you want to. Since this is a dovetail, it doesn't really matter. So I like to start on the away thing. I pinch like this and push my thumb nail up against it. Now that's to stop it, stop the saw from riding this way and pushing back. And then I nibble that, some short strokes to get a little area that my saw can rest into. Then I slowly bring that back. So now I've got that straight across. We then angle it and try and match the angle of that dovetail. So in this case, you can see that's the angle I'm going to cut on. So I'm going to be straight across, but cut on that angle. 
Now some dovetail jigs allow you to have a magnet to keep your saw in that angle and they're, they're very good if that's what you require. But as you can see, I'm going to saw like this. And you just keep nibbling until you make it all the way down. So you come down and you want to stop just above that baseline. Because when we saw in the other way, we'll take that last little bit of the material out. So if you're not comfortable about coming in the other angle and you've marked your tails on both sides, you can flip the board around. It makes it a little bit easier. Or we can do what we did here. Nibble it across. So now we've got our straight across. Match our line. And stop just above our baseline. Now we turn it over and we get ready to remove this half pin material right here. Now remember earlier we put a we put a knife line along here. So to make this easier for us, now that we've got that knife wall there, we can come back in with a chisel and pair back against it. Now, what that's done, I don't know if you can see it, we'll clear those fibers. It's left a little sort of V ridge square on this side with an angle back against it. Now what that allows us to do is to bring our saw in and rest it right up against that wall. So we know because that's cut square, we're gonna cut this square. So again, get right up there with your thumb if you want to, nibble it back. We're established right across. Now that'll guide the saw. And we chop down, being very careful because if we haven't quite gone down low enough with the saw, we'll cut into the tail, which we don't want to do. And we see how this is loose now. It means it's still a little bit attached on the tail side. So I'm just going to lift that up, put the saw in. Just nibble it back until I think it's there. Still a little bit holding it. So we nibble there. Nibble back on the top, and out it comes. There we go. Now, because we took quite a bit of care when we did this, this is, should be all smooth and square across. But if it's not, you want to bring a square in here and actually make sure your tail's square, because otherwise you're going to end up with a hole or a little gap when you bring your dovetails together. Now, for a first dovetail, it doesn't really matter. And... Looking at this, this is out ever so slightly just on the back here, but because of how little that is, it might not leave a gap in the final product, but you can just come in, have a chisel that's as wide as your tail, and just uh, give it a quick pair like that, and then double check until you get it square. So we're gonna go ahead, do the other side. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, it's time to transfer across to here. So we need to hold them at 90 degrees like this and then mark them. So I'm going to go and show you how I go about doing that. What I'm using here is I'm just using a number three hand plane that I have here. You can use a number four, you can use any hand plane you got. Just something so when you put it in your vise here, you'll bring it right up here just so it sits roughly level. Then you push it back and I use it to rest the piece of material on like this. So as you can see here, I brought it right up until I can see no gap down in here. So that means those shoulders just here have come up flush in line with this piece of wood. Now you could get a little square in there if you wanted to to make sure it was all square and everything, but as you're doing a dovetail, it normally comes up square anyway. So once you've got it here, you can use the side of a chisel like this just to make sure that it's sort of sitting flush to the piece of wood. 
and in this case I've got a little bit of an overhang which is fine because you're going to plane that material off when you're done so we're flush here you can bring the chisel in on this side so we know we're flat because the back of my chisel's flat now get the knife do a couple of small passes here Make sure you're getting right into that back corner. Mark it right the way along. Do the same on the other side, starting with a couple of small passes and moving on to some heavier passes. And pencil those in. On some woods you can see them really easy, like on pine. Darker woods like this, you might want to pencil them in to see them. Our little line off the edge here, line that up. It pays to have a nice sharp pencil. So you can just get the end of the lead to sit in the cut line and it just moves quite easily. So we can see these uprights. I need to do the same on this side just so I can see. So as we did before, we bring it in. light passes and we can slowly get heavier until we've got a nice defined area that you can see right here I don't even need to pencil that one in I'll do the same on this side but what we need to do is because we've got this line here and we want it the same on the other side we need to put a little nick on the edge of the board here because we don't want to see that then we come in grab that nick with the knife like this you move it across until it falls into it bring the square up to that another nick there and what we're doing we're making sure that line is transferred identical to the other side we match it here again and now we can do the mark between our lines on this side and it'll be identical on the wood because we've brought it right around from the other side and you can see that's a very defined mark here. So now we have to cut this out. Our waste is on the inside, so we're going to try and stay just on the inside of that line we've put there. Ultimately, that line will probably be removed in the final part, but we'll, we'll chisel that to fit it after. We're going to come across this angled line and then just cut straight down. So we're going to start here. Nibble it back like we did before. And because we've got this line established, we just chop our way down to that baseline. Keeping it as straight as we can. Now you can see just here that I've come off the line a little bit. That doesn't matter because I'll sort that out with a chisel. Now we need to remove our waste, which is marked here. So one of the ways to remove this material is to use this saw here, which is called a coping saw. Now, as you could see, you can come in, come flat, and you could cut just above the baseline and then clear it out with a chisel. Now, my understanding with that is, is that is the more sort of modern approach. But as I understand traditionally, chisels were, were used to remove all the material. And that's the way I'm going to show you because that's my preferred method. And I find that it gets a cleaner and tidier finish in the end. It improves your chisel skills and it prevents you from wandering with the coping saw, which is very easily done and going under your baseline. So let's get set up and we'll chisel this out. So when I chisel this workout, I like to use two chisels. I like to have my main chisel, which is not too large, and I like to have a small chisel for cleaning out the corners after I've removed the main waste. Now when you're chiseling like this, it's not imperative that you stop it from moving, but I have a hold fast. I like to use that. You could uh, go in and out of your vice and just hammer above your thing, but 
safety first. What I do first is I come about halfway and we give a few heavy taps. A few heavy taps. So we're going right the way along. And then I come in here and I make sure it's held down really well. You can go in and out of the vise if you need it held better. And we just tap this material out. And we're looking to go halfway from both sides. Turn it over and do the same thing from this side. The edge like that, you need to actually angle your chisel, otherwise you'll cut into the side of your, your pin. And again. And now this time, now that I've got a bunch of that waste out of the way, I'm going to pair back towards that baseline, like so. So now I've got a little ridge and we've got that knife wall that we did there. I like to look down the side so you can see you're lined up, that's why I like having it the other way. But for this purpose we'll be okay. So we come in here and we just do one light tap. Look down the side of it, try and make sure you're straight or ever so slightly undercut but not the other way. And it's just a little light tap. Just tap that material loose. And now that we're starting to get a little deeper in here, we need to worry about that angle and actually tipping it as we come through. In some cases, if it's easier, you can use the big chisel in the middle and then just come in with your little chisel on the side like this. We also know that we need to remove a bit of this material in the base here. So this side's lower, so what I'm going to do is just come in and use the corner of the chisel to sever those fibres. So we can come along, start matching our dovetail here and see where we need to fit. So as we can see, that doesn't fit at all. It's too wide. So we need to come in, look at our lines here and here, and see where there was material that still needed to be removed. And in this case, I already knew that I had some in this back corner that has to go. I'm going to take a little fine shaving out of here. And then we can bring it back and try again. Now that's pushed right together. And just finally adjust some of that off. We'll also clean up this bottom corner while we're at it. I haven't done this perfect. I probably took too much material off here and I was just shaving this down. You can actually come back in and fill that with mater thin material like this when you glue it up. As long as it's the same, you can actually make a lot of gaps disappear. 
You can even put a little bit of glue there and sand it and the sanding fills the gaps in. I've also, I'm not looking so great on the baseline here, but this is just a basic dovetail. So the next thing we need to look at is, we see this line here and we've got a, we're seeing a line right through because it's making contact here, so we need to clear that little bit of material out so the whole thing can push down together. So I'm going to use PVA to glue this. And we're going to go ahead and glue this together now and then I'll show you how we can correct some of these little issues. So when we're gluing, most of the glue surface is on the side of the tails just here. So we want most of the glue. I also like to put a little bit of glue just on the base here and a little bit on the tails here. just a little bit on the base there and then I like to line it up now don't forget the glue actually fills the gaps a little bit so it's always going to be a little bit tighter putting it together with the glue but we can push it together like this and these little gaps I was telling you about on the top here are now filled as you can see here with glue now while that glue is wet with some sandpaper and that'll get some sawdust getting stuck in there and it'll hold it together. Just a little bit of 240 grit sandpaper. We will plane this at the end but I'm just using this to form a little bit of sawdust in those gaps and fill them to the baseline here where we've got some little gaps too. Any little gaps like that we just drop some glue into them. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll get back to you. So now the glue's dry, I'll put it back in my vise here and I'm just going to plane, plane the joint like this and then we'll have a look at it after it's cleaned up. You just need to make sure when you're planing like this, that you actually plane into the joint so you don't smash out the M fibers of your pins. So as you can see here, the joints came out fairly nice here. I've got a nice tight joint here as well. So there you have it folks, that's how you do a single dovetail joint. And although this one's not perfect, it gives you the idea of how to do it and how to correct some little gappy issues in your dovetails. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw in this video and would like to support me and allow me to continue making these great videos for you, please consider liking and subscribing and checking out my Facebook and Instagram pages. I also encourage you, if you have any questions related to the content in any of my videos, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.